So far this summer, we've covered several major logical fallacies. You know what they are, you know why they're fallacies, and you're getting pretty good at spotting them, which is handy. You need to know when people are trying to fool you or at least mislead you, especially those pesky politicians. Red herring, anyone? Red herring? Red herring, anyone? But we haven't really discussed what to do when encountering a logical fallacy in the wild, meaning someone throws one in your direction, in person, in real life, at you, and you have to figure out what to do. Well, it's not always easy. Let's take this example. Suppose you're in your class and you're having a nice classroom conversation about how to improve the school. And you pitch this idea. Well, I think we should have a chicken coop at school because we could learn about biology and farming and chickens. And maybe every now and then we can get a chicken egg. Now, there are many legitimate concerns this proposition raises, such as who's going to care for the chickens and what does the city have to say about it and what kind of noise are they going to make and are the walls soundproof enough so that it doesn't disturb the classes. Let's put all that aside. But let's instead say that one of your classmates, they come back at you with an ad hominem attack. Well, I think we should have a chicken coop at school because we could learn about biology and farming and chickens and maybe every now and then we can get a chicken egg. You just want to have chickens at school because your family sells chickens and you want to make money for your family. Or worse, you just want to have chickens because you're a chicken lover. Chicken lover, chicken lover, chicken lover, chicken lover, chicken lover, chicken So your classmate took the low road and came back at you with an ad hominem. That is, they attacked you or your motives or your family or your friends, your affiliations. They attacked you. They didn't attack your argument. They attacked you. What do you do? Well, in an ideal situation, you wouldn't have to do anything because after all, people are sophisticated and they would see the ad hominem attack for what it is. The person making the attack would be digging themselves a hole and so you would sit back and let them dig and you win the argument. In the real world, that never happens. People aren't that sophisticated, especially the general public. So you have to respond to an ad hominem. Here's the trick though. You don't go down that rabbit hole with them. They're trying to pull you down a rabbit hole with that ad hominem. Don't fall for it. If you fall for it, this is what happens. You just want to have chickens at school because your family sells chickens and you want to make money for your family. Well, yeah, we're gonna make some money on this, obviously, but that's not why I'm pitching this. What I'm saying, see, he just wants to make money for himself. Boo, boo, you don't care about the school, boo. Or, you just want to have chickens because you're a chicken lover. Chicken lover, chicken lover, chicken lover, chicken lover, chicken. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I like chickens. I mean, what's wrong with chickens? Who doesn't like a good chicken? I mean, I love chickens. Do you love chicken? I love chickens. What's wrong with chickens? Exposed! You're a chicken lover! Ha <laughs> ha! You admit it! So basically, by giving the ad hominem attack oxygen, it caught fire and you lose. Don't do that. Instead, what you do is show how it's irrelevant or just say it's irrelevant and then go right back on track, pivot to your argument, and make your argument. You just want to have chickens at school because your family sells chickens and you want to make money for your family. My family has nothing to do with how the chicken coop can help our schoolmates learn about biology and physiology of chickens and care of chickens and farming and sustainability and where our food comes from. I see nothing but upsides to having a chicken coop at school. See the difference? Quickly point out their ad hominem is irrelevant and pivot right back to on point and stay on point. Never focus on the ad hominem since it takes you off the point you're trying to make. Don't get dragged down the rabbit hole. Another thing to keep in mind, try to avoid triggering someone into an ad hominem attack in the first place. Don't you trigger me! Make respectful, thoughtful arguments and stay away from any hot button issues that people hold dear and love. Don't attack those things. If someone loves something and you attack it, it's in their nature to want to come right back at you. So don't do that. So for example, never argue, I think we shouldn't give chocolate milk to fat kids at school. Don't do that. You're begging for an ad hominem or some other attack, maybe, you know, physical. Instead, argue something like this. We got rid of soft drinks at school because of the high sugar content. And we still allow chocolate milk for some reason, even though it contains roughly the same sugar content. 
So to be consistent, I think we should get rid of chocolate milk as well. See the difference? It's harder to attack that one personally. You now you can come back at it in other ways, but you don't attack the person, generally speaking. If you call somebody fat though, they're gonna come back at you. And there you have it. That concludes our lesson on how to rebut ad hominem attacks. Oh, we can't leave yet because we haven't discussed Tukokui. Oh, the dreaded Tukokui. No, Tukokui. My sincerest apologies for mispronouncing Tukokui for the rest of this video. Tukokui, 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 if you recall is the type of ad hominem that occurs when you're being a hypocrite. Basically, if you're arguing for something, yet you don't do it, or you're arguing against something, yet you do it, you're being a hypocrite, that's tutokui. Don't, you know, if you get called out on that in an argument, it can be devastating. It, it makes you look bad. Um, you can still get over it. You can still get around it. It's best not to get caught in it in the first place. You don't want to be arguing for something that you yourself, you know, are guilty of doing and you're arguing against it, or you yourself are guilty not doing it, yet you're arguing for it, you know walking in that's a bad situation. But uh, suppose it happens, you gotta be ready for it. So how do you handle it? Well, the best defense here is basically to just to take responsibility. Admit you're wrong, you're weak, whatever it is, you have a change of heart, change of mind, you're wiser, smarter now, and you know this is the way forward. Don't sit there and try to defend your position because you can't both be for something and against something at the same time. It doesn't work. So just say you were for it, now you're against it, or you were against it, now you're for it, you're smarter now, you're better, you learn more. Um, you were weak, you are weak, but you know this is the righteous path. Here's a good example. I think we should ban chocolate milk at school because of the high sugar content. Dude, I sit there and watch you every day at lunch drink three chocolate milks. Count them. One, two, three chocolate milks every day for lunch, and you're gonna somehow lecture us about the ills of chocolate milk? You know, you're right. I drink a lot of chocolate milk. It's bad. I shouldn't. I don't want to, but I just love it. So I would like for it to be removed as an option so I'm not tempted by it. Um, it it's bad for my health. I know it's bad for my health, and it just needs to be removed so that I don't see it every day and I'm not tempted to have it. So to summarize, for simple ad hominem attacks, the vast majority of them, just point out how they're irrelevant and then restate your argument. It's that simple. Basically, they're trying to pull you off track, get on track, stay on track. For tutokui attacks, you need to point out that you are wrong, why you are wrong, apologize if you need to, if it's appropriate, and uh, if possible, sympathetic reason as to why you are wrong, and then point out why you're now right and move back with that argument. Stay on point. It takes a little bit longer to get back on point with a tutokui, um, but it's necessary. Then stay on point. But for the most part, it's the same thing. Handle it, move on. Now you guys, <clears throat> now you guys know at least a couple of ways of handling ad hominem attacks in the wild. So I hope this helps. Cheers. To copy, 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 to copy,